Okay, hi everyone, Chris Petrie here. Thanks so much for coming by. Hey, I'm glad you're here. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do a little change. Uh, we're gonna do a little change here. We're gonna just do some maybe uh, study on a, a few things. Um, a little different, but this is really important for watercolors. Um, uh, does it make sense to uh, once in a while uh, do some uh, classroom type uh, study? Uh, I think you'll agree, it is. It's important, we, we as artists, we have to do extra study sometimes to get ourselves to the next level to so that we can create better uh, works of art. So this is important, Let's we'll, we'll stick close to this subject matter here today. We're gonna go with tonal values, lights and darks, and we're gonna use the format of pint quart gallon ratios of our lights and darks in our painting, our tonal values, uh, to create really beautiful effects. And um, this um, ratio, pint quart gallon, and this can be done in any ratio, you can use a gallon of all dark and, and switch around your ratios, but if you, if you keep it in this format of a pint worth, a quart worth and a gallon worth of lights and darks in your painting in that particular format, you're definitely going to have a very beautiful and pleasing painting overall, just visually. So right now we're looking at it from a black and white perspective, and we'll paint some paintings coming up in the next few minutes. We'll do some paintings with the um, darker, you know, um, Payne's gray and ivory black, and we'll mix in some other colors too. Um, we'll do a few paintings uh, to I'll work out this uh, idea of lights and darks and the measures of and quantities of the lights and darks in a painting as we have here. And here we used this format and we created this small composition just with a marker and a crayon. I have a crayon here, just one of those pull, you know, with the pull string, the uh, china marker. So we did a little working out here with the uh, our Sharpie pen, and uh, we did this small composition to show a pint worth of darkest darks here, some fence posts, a couple little shadows there, and then maybe there's a barn over here in the distance, and this is like our uh, silos, and there's like a farm over here in the distance, farmhouse, a barn. And when we use this quantity, we can see it looks pretty good. Core of middle tones, middle tonal values, and you can see here, we did that. And then we left a gallon worth, the largest amount of white paper, or lights. And you can see how that does have a pleasing effect. Does that, does that look pleasing? And pretty, pretty good visually? I, I think you'll agree it does, it actually looks Quite pleasing, that overall feel. And now we're gonna change this around and we're gonna do some paintings just in a few minutes. And I always mention, uh, if you're new here and you haven't uh, subscribed, uh, please consider subscribing. You can hit the uh, subscribe button just below uh, your video uh, right now. And there's also a bell there, a notification bell. If you click the notification bell, that means it'll alert you each uh, week when our new video comes out. And we make videos here if you're new. We make videos once a week and we do mostly paintings every week and we go soup to nuts with paintings. We cover every aspect of how to create a painting um, start to finish. And um, we also do some of these once in a while. We'll do more of a study type uh, video. So I wanna keep things uh, um, changing as well as keeping things the same. So you're always gonna have paintings being done uh, on a weekly basis as I always do. And then once in a while we'll just do a little sidetrack and we'll go down a different path and we'll do a little bit of study and we'll cover some design ideas and other uh, interesting aspects of um, painting and watercolor, and this can also be applied to any really any medium. Uh, people that work in photography and film, uh, again, and any medium, whether watercolor, pastels, oils, acrylics, they uh, pro professional artists will use this uh, in their in their paintings to, to make their paintings look better and, and more interesting. So let's do that. Let's make some notes and we'll take a quick break here. I'm just gonna take a break at a drink of water and come right back and we'll start um, working on our first uh, composition, our first painting using this method here, the uh, pint quart and gallon. Okay, we'll be right back.
Okay, we took a break. We're um, <clears throat> relaxed now. We're, we're going to start working on our small compositions. So I'm going to remove this paper here. We'll get a, a piece of um, watercolor paper. I'm going to use some student grade paper. It's uh, Fabriano student grade paper. And I always like to, uh, <clears throat> when working, uh, I always, I always at least tape down my paper in a couple locations so that it doesn't move around. That really can um, cause a problem if you're painting or drawing and the paper's moving around. So I always try to make sure, no matter no matter whether I'm practicing or I'm doing a finished painting, it's always secure 100%. And then on this, we're gonna just to make the uh, composition look really good. We're gonna we're gonna tape the exterior of our composition. We'll make a border around it. And what's fun about these compositions is we can actually, um, <clears throat> I have it on a, uh, I guess this is about, let's see here, 7 by 11. So I took a, um, a 14 by 11 sheet of paper and I just trimmed it in half. So that leaves me with a uh, 7 by 11. Um, sheet of uh, Fabriano um, uh, watercolor paper and and then we'll just put our border on there with the tape good uh, artist tape some drafting tape I have um, we're all set really and then at the bottom of our paper We'll take our uh, office pencil and we're just going to put down the ratio that we're going to use here. And and then when we're done with this composition, uh, we can actually save this uh, paper. We can save this paper and, and put it in a folder. And then when we're working on a, a painting, let's say a finished painting, we can look at the folder and get some ideas on uh, on how we're going to do our uh, light and dark design in our paintings if we choose to do that this is not a every painting has to have this exact principle but it, it is it is good to have this design idea when you're doing your paintings just as a um, something to reference to make your painting look better if you can or more exciting sometimes you won't need to use this other things can be exciting in a painting where you don't have to really worry about light and dark patterns. But light and dark patterns are a good consideration, again. With art, you're the artist, you, you can... Um, look at these considerations and, and then you'll... Okay, so we'll do our pint, I'll abbreviate, pint. Quart and gallon. Uh, on this one, <clears throat> let's try. Uh, let's see. We'll get our brush, like a watercolor brush here, and this is a, a Raphael brush, uh, number eight Raphael, and it's a Kalinsky sable uh, hairs, round, round. Uh, brush and some clean fresh water and that's all you really need and then again my colors I just have Payne's gray that's a cool a cool uh, black and then we have um, ivory black that's a warm black so that look you know if you could think of it as black with a little bit of blue 
it gives you your panes gray. And then if you have black and you add a little bit of maybe some warmer, like uh, maybe some uh, burnt sienna, like some brown or some burnt umber, uh, you'll get a warmer black like this, the panes gray, uh, ivory black. And then we have cerulean blue. We're going to use a little bit of <clears throat> color maybe in some of our compositions. Maybe the first one we'll just use black. So we just have a couple different colors as well as the two blacks, Payne's gray and ivory black. And we have again yellow ochre and cerulean blue. Just in case we want to add a little interesting uh, color variation to our black and white um, compositions here. Alright, so we'll take our pencil and I'm just going to come up with a, a basic third. So I'm going to do a third here, a third here. I'm going to go across and make a horizon line. So we're going to do like, like a landscape here. Uh, maybe there's a lake here, a lake and some trees. So I'm just going to, and this is a fun exercise. You can just have fun with this. This is not too exacting. We're just having some ideas here. A tree over here, a lake. Uh, maybe another tree over here, maybe like a pine tree here. Some branches, pine tree branches are kind of level. Like, you know, they're, they're the branches on pine trees a lot of times are sort of straight out level. And then a few of them here and there are maybe, you know, upwards slanting like that, like on a 45 degree angle or so. And then a larger tree over here, maybe it's a pine tree too. Maybe another pine tree here as well. And maybe some more too, maybe another tree over here. Let's make a balanced painting. If we think of a, a seesaw, you know, a painting is more pleasing if we balance it. So if we have trees over here, we want to have larger trees over here too, or something could be, a, we could use a, an idea of a house over here too if we wanted to, just to balance the weight of the things of the, um, and some, some reflections in the, in the water. We don't want to forget that. So let's make indications of dark reflections in the water and the same thing with that pine tree. And then over here too, and maybe another tree over here. And that looks pretty good. And then we're going to use, um, and maybe some distant trees over here. Maybe a distant hill over here. That's good. Just some indications of pencil lines to give us, and we're just doing a fun composition here. We're not going to try to create a, a one, you know, a, a, a finished painting or anything like that. We're just having fun. Have fun with your watercolors when you're doing your uh, studies, when you're doing some studies on what we're doing here on our tonal values and darks and lights. And then we said we're going to use our pint quart gallon. Um, design principle and we're going to use on this one here let's uh, we'll use some okay that is ivory black we're going to use a quart of ivory black so that's straight paint right out of the tube And I rinse my brush, and then I take, um, just sometimes I'll take a tissue and just tap some of the water off there. And then we'll go with a medium tone. So we'll look, look at the palette and we'll say, okay, that's about a medium tone there. We'll use a gallon of medium tone. Then I rinse off my brush a little bit. That looks good. That's a nice medium tone there that we've put onto our pint quart and gallon swatches that we're doing here. And then we're going to leave this white paper. So we want to leave that white paper.
so that's our combination we're going to use, our, our, uh, our ratios as we go in and do this painting. And I'm thinking, let's use a gallon. That's a lot. That's the majority of this painting is going to be middle tones. So in that case, um, we're going to, let's, we'll make the sky this color. So let's say it's a sky where it's maybe like sunset or sunrise where it's darker out. So the sun, there's going to be light in the sky, but it's a darker sky. And maybe we'll make the water, we'll keep some of the water really light. So we'll make our white paper some of the lights in the water and our darkest darks we're going to create with the trees. So just a little bit of white, <clears throat> a decent amount of darkest darks, and then our medium tone. That's the majority of the washes on this, this composition. Okay, let's get into it. We're going for those middle tones. So I'm going to get a wash <clears throat> and make that wash middle tone. And it's going to dry lighter, so we don't want to go too light. We want to make it a decent... Because really, when you think of it, we only have three uh, tonal values in this composition. Completely dark, <clears throat> darkest dark, which is straight paint out of the tube. White paper, which is very small amount, and again, and the largest amount is the middle tone. So your middle tone, you can't really go too wrong with that because there's only three. So let's go with our middle tone there in our sky. We'll do our sky wash like that. We can go right over the trees because it's lighter. The trees are all going to be darker. And then maybe a few lights in the sky. Like that. And then here's where get that good wash. We're going to do more medium tones. And we're going to leave some white paper, but just a little tiny bit. See how I just left, left a little bit of white paper? Because that white paper is really very minimal. We're not going to use much white paper at all, according to our chart. So we will Okay. Already it's looking good. Okay, now we're going to just, uh, we'll just clean up our pad a little bit here. And what we'll do is we'll take a break. We're going to let this dry a little bit. Not completely, but Let's get, let most of this dry. We'll come back and we'll start in with our, our trees. And that's really once we start putting in our larger and medium sized trees over here with our darkest dark, which is the you know average amount of paint in this composition, you'll, you'll see that everything will come together and look really, really good. So uh, let's come back in about maybe five, 10 minutes after this dries a little bit. Good time to take a break and we'll be back in just a second. All right, we're back again. <laughs> I'm glad you're sticking here and, and uh, having fun with us. We're, we're having a good time here. And uh, we've let our paper dry somewhat. So you can see there's just a few little spots here that have some uh, darker darks that are sort of um, still puddling a little bit. No, no worries. Let's get back in and, and continue with our composition. Now, we did paint over the lines quite a bit, but I do recall that I, I put in the, the tree tree shapes in pencil underneath this. So I don't really, I can barely see the, this pencil sketch underneath here, but that's okay. Cause really this is just a fun composition anyway. We're not, uh, have to, we don't have to worry. So let's take some more ivory black. Now these, we're going in now with our darkest darks. We've gotten in our gallon of medium tones. You can see that. And we've gotten more than a gallon here. More, more than a gallon of medium tone, but that's okay because we're going to cover over and get our mid middle of the road quantity of darks right now, which will reduce our gallon. So we're going to keep that ratio in mind as we're going. 
And then here we're going to do our tree. So we have some tree shapes here with our darkest darks. And you can just do some fun tree shapes. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Tree shapes, usually you can, if you flick the brush upwards, um, that, that tends to be a good way to flow with your brush. Um, also, we'll do another one the other way. Well, actually, since we're doing this, better to stick with the same game plan with, like, if we're going to do trees mostly upstrokes, it's better to sort of keep that throughout the composition. Like the same... Uh, the same brush strokes and things. Okay, and we're, again, we have a lot of, let's leave some, some paper with, um, we're going to leave some of those lights, those like brightest bright white paper, we're going to leave those. Here we're going to do that shadow of underneath this here, that tree, but it's not going to be solid. We're going to leave water lines. So as long as it is similar in, in size, that shadow will work. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just as much as we can block in some shadow on that reflection. And let's keep going here. And maybe we're going to go here and... Do some... And if you have to go back and grab some tube paint and fill up your, I'm going to probably have to do that. And here you can see I'm going to just mirror that uh, reflection down into the water of this, this tree here. Um, we can also use a needlepoint brush um, to get some more detail into the uh, trees if we want. And so we can do that here. And then these are fun and this is a great brush to use for more of that finer detail look and we'll use some here too sparingly though we don't want to go too too many uh fine brush strokes we just want to have a sort of a detail to some of it but not not ever not going too overboard you know anything just like that would be good and Put some more ivory black here, so I'm using Windsor Newton ivory black. And we're all, always remembering we have to use quite a bit of the quart, quart worth of uh, darks. So we still have some to do. And I think we had another tree over here. And so we're, we'll put some more. Again, I'm just flicking my brush upwards. It could be windy out, so some of the branches are going to be flowing this way. Maybe here too. I will just have all the wind kind of gusting around and a couple going this way. Here. So I'm going to go with a darker dark there along the bottom of that. And I'm definitely keeping those lights there. So let's keep some of those.
All right, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> and we'll put a little bit of splashing. Maybe we'll do some lines here just for reflections. We need a little bit more dark over here to reflect down into the water where that tree is, and maybe this too. This one here. All right, that looks good. Now we'll take a break and we'll uh, peel up the tape and we'll just look at the ratio that we used again. And we'll do another couple more, just like this. So we'll, we'll keep going here and just kind of we'll expand the idea of these ratios, pine quart gallon, and then on the next one we're going to change the, the combination. So maybe we're going to use something different. We're not going to have the same combination. We're going to use a different one and see how that looks. But you can kind of see already that it does look pretty good. If you, Does that look good to you? Um, as an artist, you can ask yourself that question as you're looking at this. Does that look good, the combination? Um, maybe I have too many darks here, so maybe I need to take my paper towel and do some, some lifting of paint to try to get more of the gallon. I might have went with too many darks. And if I just do that a couple places, like that, that might be okay. And then I can go back and touch up just a little bit so that we still have the reflection idea. Just So I went back in and I added a little more of the middle tone by, by lifting up a little bit of the paint with a paper towel or a tissue you can use as well. That's just a quick way to kind of adjust and again we're, we're, we're doing a composition here practice this is a uh, practicing our craft as an artist so we can do a little bit of makeshift uh, repairs as we go and that, that looks pretty good though all right we'll be right back we'll lift up the tape check it out and then we'll get on to our next one Okay, we came back from a break and we're just going to look at this and I noticed that I might not have left quite enough um, white paper on this composition. I, I kind of noticed that now. Um, and that can affect the look of this. So let's try to add, but before we add some white, I'm going to use some titanium white here. But before we do that, let's, let's peel off the tape and we'll kind of see how it looks once we remove the tape. That does help a little bit because we're not really considering the tape as part of our painting. So sometimes that can throw things off a little bit. So once we lift the tape, we'll see a little better, a little better uh, idea of, so that looks good. That, that looks good, but I do say that it needs a little white, more, more of the bright white paper. And, um, if we can leave it white paper, that's much better. I am going to use a little titanium white just to see if it makes it look a little more interesting. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, I think that looks a little better with just a touch more of that pint worth of uh, white. But again, the leaving it the white paper is, you know, that's the, the goal. And, uh, but just to kind of show how it looks with that little bit more of the white paper, you can kind of see it does look a little better, I think. And that proves out our, our design principle that using pint, quart, and gallon of this tonal values, light and dark, 
looks very pleasing, and it does. Let's start another one. Okay, we're gonna put this one aside over here. And we're going to tape this down. Again, I always tape, tape my paper down at least in two locations so that it doesn't move around. And then we'll do our rectangle. We'll tape out a, a spot here. Okay, there we go. We're going to start our second um, composition where we're going to, again, we're going to use our pint, quart, and gallon. Pint, quart, gallon. This one, let's say let's do let's do a gallon of white and mix in a little bit of this too so let's do a gallon of white <clears throat> so we're going to leave that white paper Let's use a quart of medium tone. And let's go with a pint of darks. This is what we started with on our very first, when we started the video, and I had that um, Sharpie marker uh, drawing. That's that's what we did on that. So that's this is the same thing as that. Pint of darkest darks, quart of middle tones, and white paper for our gallon. And uh, we're gonna we'll do the same type of design as we did there. How does that sound? And I know everyone is saying, how is this gonna look when we're completed? And we're gonna do the same thing. We'll we'll get our office pencil and. Again, we'll do our thirds. Good way to just fundamentally get a nice composition going. Thirds, and let's do our horizon line here. So this is going to be the distant hills, and that's the distant hills. We're looking at a farm scene, maybe, out in the countryside. It's beautiful. It's a warm, sunny day. We're out in the countryside. We're having some iced tea, setting up our easel and our our chair and we're going to do a paint the scene outdoors and then we'll make our we'll make our subject matter of interest here let's make our distant barn with some silos out here We'll just make a we'll make a barn shape, so a barn roof like that. Some silos next to the barn like that, and a shadow. And then let's make an interesting angle towards us here like that, just so we get like an angle, an idea with this light sketch. And then we'll say let's make some fence posts here, and then. We'll, we'll notice that they get smaller as they're going in the distance here. And as they get into the distance, they get closer together as well. So they get uh, they get closer 
and smaller and tiny and eventually they're just tiny dots, maybe not even. Just we kind of get that idea of perspective. So they, they're larger over here, the fence posts, and then they go this way. And then we'll have a few fence posts over here. Maybe this one here is and some shadows. Let's put the shadows in too so we remember to to put our shadows in our... So the sun maybe is... We'll put a little just an insignia that the sun is shining this way. This way, like that. And that just helps us to get some shadows. And then maybe this one here is tipped a little bit there like that. And maybe a, maybe these are some barbed wire. And we'll leave that uh, open over here. So just some fun stuff. This is just really, you know, we're doing a composition here. We're creating just on the on the go. So I'm just improvising this. I did have another composition that we did in the beginning. So we kind of had that idea. Remember when we started, we had this idea. So I, I just took this idea and, you know, did the same thing here. Just enlarged it a little bit. And we'll keep continue on here and So we're, we're remembering quart of middle tones, pint of very, very dark darks, and then mostly white paper. So we know here this composition is a little more, it'll go a little more quickly because we're going to leave a lot of white paper. If that makes sense, it's more of a, this one will go faster. And let's get started. We'll, we'll get our middle tones first. I think that's the thing we can do. So we're going to go across here like this. And maybe I'll just add a little yellow ochre in there, just for a little bit of interest. And I can go into that barn area too, like that. And we do have a quart of uh, of this, so let's I'm gonna use that. And that could be a cloud up here, so maybe we'll put a couple clouds up here. So maybe the maybe the shadowing on the land on the land is actually clouds, and we can do that by maybe just putting some clouds up here. And we can have a lot of fun with this. When, we, when we're when creating these type of compositions like we're doing right here now, you can have a lot of fun with these and it's almost like there's no pressure. So you can practice some interesting brush strokes. And uh, more carefree. And you can kind of see what works for you if you have. Now here I can go over this with lighter tone because we're going to make this dark and we recall we're going to use just a tiny bit of the darkest darks so and we can do we can do some shadowing with our medium tone like that All right. All right, this is the perfect time to take a break and let this completely dry or, you know, 90% at least. Um, but I would say, yeah, if we let this dry completely 100%, we come back, we'll get our darkest darks in, our pint, worth of uh, straight out of the tube paint for our fencing, uh, our some of our shadows, and our uh, distant uh, barn over here in the distant... Uh, horizon area, horizon line area. Okay, we'll come right back. Good time for a break. I'm going to take a quick break and we'll see you in just a second.
All right, we're back. I took a break. I hope you took a break too, everyone. Take a break, you know, relax. Uh, it helps with the concentration. Now here, this is almost like 100% dry. If you ever have a question, if your painting is dry, all you have to do is just gently touch it with your hand in a few, you know, with your finger in just a few locations, very, very lightly. <clears throat> I can feel this is just a touch damp, but really mostly dry. Also too, the, the paper is usually a little more, uh, has a buckle to it. It kind of is a little, sometimes uh, it has like a roll to it. A gentle roll here and there if it's uh, damp still but that's good now um, I'm going let's go in and we're using straight out of the tube paint for our darkest darks now so now we're gonna work on our pint worth so we've already accomplished our two main objectives a gallon of white paper, and you can kind of see here, the gallon of white paper, a lot of white paper here. So we're leaving that gallon of white paper. Quart of middle tones, you can see we have a good amount of middle tones throughout this picture. And now all we have to do is finish up with our pint of dark, the darkest dark, straight out of the tube paint. And just as a side note, you, you know, if you, if we're going to create this darkest dark, it's going to have to be one of the darkest colors in your palette. So you wouldn't be able to get this with like a cadmium red. Cadmium red is like a middle value, a middle tonal value, right? So if you look at um, your paint palette, you just have to look into your palette. Like if we look in here into our palette, we can see this is not nearly as dark as these two colors. So Payne's gray and ivory black are is dark, the colors are extremely dark. They're like, you know, as dark on the scale as you can get. Then here, as you go to your cerulean blue, it's like middle of the road blue, blue, this color. Any of these we can water down. Does that make sense? We can water any of these colors down and get a lighter tonal value if we want. But just the inherent color itself coming straight out of that tube paint, out of the, you know, out of the tube, you're never going to get a, a dark with a blue like this, this dark. So, so we know to get our pint worth of the darkest darks, we're going to have to use these dark, maybe a French ultramarine blue mixed with a burnt umber. That can get you a, a really, really super dark like this. But just keep aware of it. Just something to think. Does that make sense? To kind of just think in your mind when you're looking at the colors in your palette, certain colors are obviously very, very dark, and certain colors are either middle or really light um, in color, like this is very light. So you would see that this yellow ochre um, is quite a bit lighter actually, coming straight out of the tube than this blue. Like if you squint your eyes, you can kind of see this is definitely lighter. It's not quite as dark as this. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at your uh, dark, uh, dark and light in your paintings, you sort of have to use certain colors to get your, especially your darks. Your lights, you can kind of water down your paints and get middle tones with m most of the colors. But uh, darks, you have to use specific colors like your French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, um, burnt umber, um, purple, mineral violet, those type of colors. But we're just going to keep it simple here. So we're just using the an easy way to do this exercise is just to use the uh, black colors here, the Payne's gray and the um, ivory black. So let's use these here. Okay, so we're having fun here. We're doing some shadows there. I'll do a couple splashes here and there. I'm going to probably go with my um, needlepoint brush here and get some darks for those fence posts. 
The only thing here we have to be aware of is not to lean into the paint. So I'm going to rest my hand here on the outside of the, the paper where we're painting and just... And the shadow is there and it kind of softens out. And you can see I'm just doing some really you know we're not we're not going too crazy here and then some very just some indications of some fence posts or some uh, barbed wire we're in a farmland here, it's farm area, it's beautiful, and we have our fields and our barn over here. And Alright, now we can look at this and we can say we definitely accomplished our, uh, our goal. We got our gallon of white paper, so we left lots of white paper. We got our quart of middle tones, the clouds, the uh, distant horizon line here, the fields, some shadowing, maybe these are shadows from the clouds above. And then we have our, like, a very, you know, and then our super darks, our pint of darkest darks. We got that. We got the distant um, barn with some silos. We're in the countryside. It's beautiful, hot, sunny day. We're out here. Um, this might be a little, we could maybe tap this a few times just to, that looks a little better. And, uh. Um, and some fence posts and a couple uh, fence, um, some fence posts and uh, fencing, maybe some barbed wire loosely put in, but just a little bit of those indications of the darkest darks with the, the um, fences and this distant uh, barn. We could even go with maybe a little more interesting, maybe a small... Maybe there's a, another, maybe this is the the farmhouse where the people live, the farmers might live here and make this a little more interesting. A couple more buildings maybe, like that. And that can really make your eye just really beautifully flow through the painting and it just keeps going, kind of just draws your attention across through the whole painting and back and forth. That's a really good design of just having things slowly diminishing in size as you go into a painting. That's another design principle that really works nicely. And uh, that's good. Let's peel off the tape here just to check out the um, more of the composition. Maybe a black mat around this would look good or a white mat with a black uh, stripe, a black, uh, like a double mat with a black inner mat and then a larger white mat or matting looks really nice over the top of paintings as you know so that always looks good to do that but overall you can kind of see how that really does have a pleasant how do you feel about that do you, do you think that's a pleasant looking uh pleasant looking scene maybe i can zoom in a little 
Maybe when we're done, we'll do, let's do one more. Let's do one more composition with our ratios. And then when we're done, we'll zoom on, on you know, zoom in on each one and kind of see how we feel about it. And if it really does um, ring true that using these quantities of tonal values works. This is something really important. A lot of great painters from from the past always relied on this type of design method to uh, create really beautiful paintings. All right, so, all right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back, we'll do one more. Okay, we're back, and I, I just zoomed in on this scene, and this this one's my favorite so far out of the two that we've done. I like this one the best. It really does look good, and I um, it's got a really... I really feel like we're out in the desert or out in the farm areas. It feels like a lot of bright light in this one. I really like this one a lot. This one is really um, my favorite so far. So let's continue on. I'm going to zoom out here, back out, and we'll, again, we're working with our watercolor paper and we, um, I just took a pad of paper and I cut the watercolor paper in half. So this was, um, this one is uh, seven by eleven. So I just had a a, um, a four, uh, fourteen by eleven pad of paper and I just trimmed it down. So we have smaller sheets of paper, and we're just gonna uh, do our uh, continue on and do our uh, taping. We're gonna tape the. I'll secure the paper down with some artist tape. And we'll do the same thing. We'll create a, a border here with our tape. All right, we're back again and in business here. We got our tape down and we're gonna continue. We're gonna do one more uh, of our pint quart and gallon. So we'll start out pint quart gallon. Perfect. All right, now let's, um, there's more combinations obviously than these three we did. You can you can um, work on different combinations. I think, you know, three is a good solid way to do this. And uh, this one, let's go with, let's go with, um, Darkest dark as our gallon. And then our quart, let's go with medium tone. Quart will be medium tone. Medium tonal value. And then let's leave our pint to be the white paper. Now that one, this one here is similar to the first one we did. So in this one here we used the same, a pint of white paper. So we that's the same, but then we reversed it. We're doing mostly darks for the gallon and then middle tones for the quart. So it's reversing these two from our first one that we did. So if that makes sense, we reverse these two in this one, but these st this stayed the same, a pint of the lights, the white paper. So let's try that. Now the idea is what can we do to um, make this interesting? Uh, let's change it up. We did kind of like two landscapes. So let's maybe do maybe an interior. Let's, so let's do maybe do it. We'll do a window maybe. 
And I'm just improvising, you know, improvising here. I'm going to try to think for the darkest darks. I'm just thinking maybe a cool, interesting window here. I'm totally improvising here. Let's do a window. So we'll do an interior, maybe an inside of a, a home. And we're... We're going to do a window. And again, this is just a composition, so I, I hope, um, does that make sense? We're just doing compositions here, so this is not like a real fancy painting or, you know, like a gallery painting or, um, you know, something like that. This is more just we're having, we're doing compositions here just to get ourselves um, used to some of the uh, design principles that we're going to use in our, our finished paintings that we do when we do um, our more finished work. So I'm just going to do... I think I'll change this, maybe, just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so I have a window here, and then maybe a table here. And then maybe we'll make a little, maybe a vase of flowers here. And this is going to be mostly a dark painting, so I just want to get some ideas down. And I think the rest is going to be dark over here. We're going to have a little bit of these flowers showing maybe. We have the window with the light, so maybe this is like in the evening or in the very early morning, so very little light coming through the window. So most of this is going to be dark, so I don't have to really do too much as far as drawing goes. Just some pencil sketching just to kind of get some ideas. I think this is good. So a table with a vase, some flowers, and the window. And again, we're using mostly dark, darkest darks. So that, in essence, is... a this one is similar to the using white paper for the large amount that we just did, the uh, farm scene, where a lot of the work is sort of already done with the help of the actual ratios that we're using, if that makes sense. So since this is going to be mostly dark, Let's work our way from the exterior inwards. So this is all dark and I might need, I'm going to need more paint. And I'll add a little bit of yellow ochre there. A little bit of cerulean blue, maybe too. So here you can see I'm just really getting in a lot of darks because I know we know we're going to use a lot of darks in this one. So let's make sure we get lots of darks in here. And again, you have fun with this. So now we're slowly working in to the area where the light is. So the the white whites are going to be the um, window area and then the middle tones are going to be here so we'll start getting our middle tones in and again I'm improvising here having fun if it doesn't come out perfect please don't get mad Can't forget to leave some of that white paper. I'm going 
a splash where the flowers are, so we have a little bit of that flower feeling. And I'm working somewhat, you know, quickly. I don't want to take too much time here to uh, develop this. I want all the colors to, or I want all the paint to sort of fuse together. Um, and I think we can get this all done in like one... Okay, so we have the If you feel you, you went over a spot, you can always lift up a little bit. And we can always, let's take our time a little more. I'm rushing a little too much. I'll admit that right now. And we said gallon of dark is dark. And then now that we're around the window area, we know it's going to be lighter. That's where the light's coming from, the outdoor. So this would be the maybe indoors, there's no lights on. It's either in the evening or early morning. And we're just kind of seeing the light in the window area so we can lighten that area. And I'm trying to keep that idea <clears throat> mostly dark with a little bit of a quart of middle tones and a pint of lights. So that there. Okay, that's, now's a good time we let this dry and then we can sort of finish the, um, the middle tones and even some darks. We can get some more darks in here or on this window. So we'll put some dark darks in this window just to make it look a little more interesting. But this, this kind of gets the idea of what we're looking for, the uh, gallon of darkest darks, some of those middle tones, and lightest lights. Okay, we'll take a quick break. Let's take a quick break now, and we'll come back and we'll finish up this uh, last composition. And we'll peel up, the, peel off the tape and, and take a look, and we'll take a look at the other ones again too, just quickly. Okay, we took a break, everyone. Thanks for uh, sticking in here, and we're really uh, making a lot of... Uh, Good progress on these uh, compositions here, and we, we said we're working with our um, pint quart gallon ratios of lights and darks, and we've completed now. This is our third composition we did. We'll go back uh, at the end of this segment and just look at each of again, you know, each of those again, just to kind of review them quickly. 
But uh, this one's pretty much close to finished. And the only thing here I noticed is I should have probably left these window, uh, these window panes here, the glass. I should have left those all white paper, probably. Um, and then maybe just added a tiny bit of wash to them. And you can kind of see I got a little bit, I rushed a little bit, and I added a little bit what I would consider unpleasant looking marks on those window panes. So what we'll do is we will we'll fix this up a little bit here with some white paint um, that we have. Just so you can see that we're, this is not a finished painting. This is just a composition and we can go in and do things like this. We can, we can take our unpleasant marks and just cover them over with some white paint. Not a big deal because we're, again, we're looking for the overall look of, that we're trying to accomplish here. Um, you know, this wouldn't look good in a finished painting, having this white paint, you know, s you know, splashed on here like this all over the place. I mean, it, white paint is fine if you're using it very strategically and to get some lights here and there or maybe to make a minor correction, but the way I'm using the white paint right now is not really suggested if you're doing a finished painting, but for compositions like this, it is good. So we can kind of understand how it should look. So we're getting back the look we want, which would be more keeping the window panes themselves that really light light. Then we'll take some of that white paint here and we'll add a little water to it, make it a little bit... Uh, and what I'll do is I'll splash a little bit. I'll make some splashes where these flowers are. Make that look a little more interesting over here too. Like that. Then I'll take my needlepoint brush and I'll go into my white with my needlepoint brush. So I'm just going to take the needlepoint brush, put a little bit of white on there. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll make some indications of some stems and things for our flowers. I'll make some flower shapes here maybe just to... just to make it look interesting and kind of absolutely make it certain that we know we're, we have flowers here on the table and that seems to be plenty enough that we know now. We don't have to guess and so that's good. And then let's uh, take some darks and uh, we'll do a little bit on the window. We'll do a little more detail on the window. So here I would, I would, I think I'll use the larger brush here and make it somewhat dark. And I'll go with some darks here just around the window. I think that does make it look look better. And I just I try to And I'll add a little bit of and maybe a little bit more of the and a couple little bits of bit of texture. That's why I add this little bit of splashing just for some texture to make it look a little more interesting. 
and we'll get a blow dryer. We'll just blow dry a little bit here. Okay, so we did a little bit of uh, we did a blow drying there just a little bit to get things uh, dried, and then we'll go under here. So I'm just going to add a few more darks there just to Okay, and I think you'll agree it does look pretty good with that ratio. Gallon of super darks, quart of some of those medium tones, and then a pint of the lights. And my ratio could have been, I might need a little more of the quart here, but it, it's close to what it's, our goal was. To, we'll peel off the tape and we'll take a look and I think. How do you feel about that as we peel the tape off? Do you think it looks pretty, pretty pleasing, pretty good with that ratio of lights and darks? Uh, I think that looks really good. Okay, and then we'll I'll just zoom in a little bit more on these three. So we'll just review these one more time. I'll zoom in. So here we have the we have the ratio of uh, a gallon of darks. You can see the majority is darks. Very, very dark quart of the medium tones, not quite as much as the gallon, and then a small amount of the lights. And Okay, so that is... This one I, I really like a lot too. I think the, the dark really is powerful um, in this painting. And we could always go in and touch things up. Do, you know, I would do this too at home when you're um, in your studio at home. If you're traveling and you're doing some practicing, you know. Have fun with these compositions. We'll, we'll take a look at um, our our first uh, composition that we did. And this was our landscape with some a lake and um, trees and uh, darker sky. And we, we accomplished a good amount. The gallon of medium tonal values, the um, largest portion all through the sky and then all through here, you can see all those medium tones, medium tonal values. Court of darks, you can see we got quite a bit of darks in here. The trees and the um, water areas, we used a lot of those darkest darks. And then we just had a tiny bit of the pint worth of the lights, the white paper we left. And again, we used some white, titanium white paint to try to re- capture what we wanted to leave in the painting with our whites just so we know for future that we want to definitely leave more white paper on this one. We, we went a little bit too much with uh, the medium wash over the top of the lights. But that, that also was 
good. And then we did this one here, our second one that we did. And this one here was a gallon of white paper or light, whitest, you know, the uh, lightest light all through the sky, all through the ground area, the foreground, the middle ground, the sky, all the white paper. We left that. More of a simple um, painting to execute because you have, most of the work is done for you. You're leaving most of the white paper on there. Core of medium tone, S clouds, some of the distant hills in the foreground here, some shadowing, perhaps from the clouds above. And then our darkest darks, just a small amount of those. The uh, distant, um, uh, barn here in the house maybe and some other structures along here and the fence posts and fencing and maybe some barbed wire here and so forth so we have um, this one here uh, probably my favorite out of the three and we can zoom in a little more on each one so let's zoom all the way in And then our all right oh, everyone I hope you had fun enjoy practice these try them out keep yourself a nice scrapbook with these in it so you can refer back to them these will definitely uh, help you to create more uh, exciting paintings when you're going to do your finished work. And uh, always, uh, again, thanks. And I hope you'll uh, subscribe if you haven't. And um, uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.